Hello guys, welcome to my channel again. My name is Kunal and today I'll be telling you, I'll be showing you how to do the pre-flight inspection of the cockpit of an ATR 72 500 series. So let's begin. So as of right now we have a, a GPU connected and so we'll be doing it as such if the GPU is available. So first thing is turn on the battery check the MFC test 1A2A and uh, 1B2B so there will be some self tests going on with the APM the pressurization and etc so just give it a little second here and the FDAU will come alive just like that and now we have the external power switch however first we need to check if the voltage is correct which we will check here through the maintenance panel. You can just uh, open this. Open it like that and make sure the electric indication is on external power, so all the way to the left. And we check the DC voltage here. Should be in the green. 28 for start is very good. So the GPU is good for our flight. We can now proceed to activating this press and everything comes to life. So first thing I do recommend, everybody has their own procedures of doing the pre-flight. What I like to do first is do the uninstator light test. So here all the bulbs light up in the aircraft and we go through all of them to make sure that no lights, no light bulbs are fused. Everything looks good, we can now start the pre-flight. So during the daytime, let's uh, go through the... What I like to do is go through the panels after go here. We, I go upwards from here to here and then I do the same like this, like this, like this. Come here and then go from right all the way to the left and then go downwards like this so I don't miss anything it's called a flow so let's start here during the daytime compass standby compass light storm lights off flight compartment lights on off minimum cabin lights off and uh, to check the fuel pump now we have to confirm both low pressure lights are on cross feed is off we can turn pump one on confirm cross feed and I mean uh, the feed low pressure goes off turn on cross feed Confirm this light goes off and turn the cross feed off and we have to wait for the low pressure to come in. We'll check that and then fuel pump goes off. Check the doors, switch lights and these two lights come on, cab okay, service okay. However, they only work when the, the doors are open. Check the landing gear, all three green, TLU is on auto, no faults, MFC no faults. Then there's the fire test, there's a squib button. So you can test the squib, confirm two squib lights, check fault, there's a two-way switch, fault, confirm loop on the cap and the caution, and now we can move the condition lever slightly out of shutoff and push it to fire, check the light comes on, check the master warning, engine fire, let it go, fire test is complete. Remember to push it back down. Now we go to the lights, 
Taxi take off lights, landing lights all off, wing light off, logo light off, strobe off, nav light to be on. And this is the prop brake, check prop brake light is here. If it's not engaged, you can engage it. Hydraulic pump on, check pressure rising. And uh, that will give us some pressure to do the walk around as well. This is confirmed on off, so out of boats, check both are in. Check the BTC is in line, continue upwards, check it's not discharging the battery. Battery on, no faults, and now we come to the CVR test. So what we do is we have the ground control button, press on, and now we can test this. Check in the green, and reset. Check seat belts off and emergency lights disarmed. Check all are not active, so they shouldn't be on. Off, off, and these should be off. The probe's heating and the windshield heating to be off. Check the gens are in and faulted because they're not powered. The buses are off, the pumps are in and low pressure. And then that's the emergency locator transmitter test, which we do not do. We come to the wipers, check if they're off, bleeds are on, packs are on. We put this to minimum because it's very hot in Dar es Salaam. Check these are in, no lights, main supply on. And then we can do the compartment smoke test. Just press and hold. Check. Check all three are illuminated, let go and they'll disappear automatically. Once that is done, we need to do, we need to reset the exhaust mode. So it'll make a horn sound and it just resets. And that's reset and you hear the fans come back to life. Squib test, same procedure, faults. Check loop on the cap. Slightly out of feather. Fire, master warning. Engine fire and fuel shut off. And we push it back down. So that is done. I'll now turn the radios on like that. And then now we can come here to the oxygen test. So we press this, confirm the crosses. What we can do is put this on intercom and do it again. And the sound comes from the speaker to make sure that they're connected. And now we can test the FO switching. Let's turn the screens on. So, you can press this and it illuminates system one. And it should illuminate on this side that the captain switching is on as well. Then we do the same, VRIOS, check it's there as well, off and EFIS. So during the checks of the switching, you know, we, can, uh, we have all of these marks. So heading 1, VR1, and attitude. So we turn it off, see that's what happens. When you press the EFIS SG, this EFIS signal generator switching, that means all your screen would change and it would replicate whatever is on your captain's screen. And the vice versa is also true. So if he presses this button, it will mirror your screen onto his screen. So we use it when there's a signal generator failure. Anyway, we can, uh, there's been a slight change of scenery. Uh, we are now in, uh, Nairobi had to stop the recording the last the last leg because we got a little busy. However, we can continue our testing now. The next test is the GPWS. Just press and hold. Glide slow. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. And the testing would start. Pull up. And it would appear Terrain. as such. Pull up. We can continue the other tests Don't sink. while this thing Too is low. testing. Terrain. We can do the APM test. Too low. Gear. Press the Too low. APM Flaps. test push button. Too low. Terrain. 
Glide slope. And bank angle. Bank angle. We'll have minimums. Minimums. Five. Three speed low. Degraded Too performance. Low. Terrain. Increased speed. Terrain. Ahead. Master caution. Terrain. And ahead. And APM for Terrain. Flight. Ahead. Pull. Up. Once you get the fall light, that means Obstacle. the ahead. test is complete. Obstacle. Okay, ahead. Let it go. Obstacle. Ahead. Pull. Up. So that's the GPW has done. We can now proceed to the next one. So now we can test these things. Just check that the QNH is set and uh, the TCAT setting is set. So uh, just set in advance, put it above, check your speed bugs and check it's on VOR, things that you like. So now to test the screens, we have our control function here for the, the screens. So this is the arc and full mode, map mode, ground speed, time to go, Vorlock, RNAV, and the bearings for to choose between the RNAV, ADF, VOR, and off. So those are the points, and it'll give you needles into the screen. So to test the, the screens, there's a total of two tests. So we need to check composite mode. So the way we do that is we control we turn one screen off and see that if the composite mode is there so let's turn this off by rotating that all the way back and we'll have composite mode on the bottom screen you can turn that back on and we turn off the next screen and check for composite mode on the top screen top screen is the EADI and the bottom one is the EHSI. So you have your HSI, ADI. The next test is uh, the test button that is dedicated, which is this. So you just press and hold. And it will self-test. Once you have your 100 RA on your screen, the test is complete can let it go. So now we can proceed to this panel so we would flow like that until we get to this side. So we just check the pressurization as everything is okay. Auto press we can set the destination landing elevation in advance and there's a push to test. We can test and you'll have your alternating uh, numbers here check descent rate is normal check your uh, pressurizations at normal and it's not uh, on manual then we can proceed to landing gear down flap setting at zero trims are neutral and uh, the signs are no smoking and prop break depending on the configuration you have this is called the memo panel. Pressures. The anti-skids, we can test. Just press it, check for Fs. The way this test works is if after the test any F remains, that means that wheel has a problem on the anti-skid. Check this is on. Brack temperature. TLU should be on low speeds. This should be pushed in, no light. We move here, check all within normal limits. These things do have a test feature, which is you squeeze a pin into these things here, but it's not procedure. We continue downwards, check that the engine fuel used has been reset, now it reads zero. Check your uh, standby instruments and if they're reading correct figures check no light here everything is depressed in this is your peck then we come to our standby we can pull direct and we continue down fuel quantity test and it'll count backwards we can now do the same tests for the screens. So one goes off, 
composite mode goes on, goes off, composite mode, and the test. And now here we can move on to the radar, the weather radar. We can. This is the radar function. Off standby weather, GMAP, flight plan, and test. So just put it to test. Now what this does is you can check here. This is the button to switch between terrain and radar. Just go to radar, and you'd see that it's testing it says radar okay once it says that we can move it back to standby and uh, that completes the test for this site and also just make sure your ADC switch is on the right position depending on the day so for as per our company we use uh, ADC 2 for even days and uh, ADC 1 for odd days. So today is. Uh, we'll be using ADC 2. There is actually a technical. So we are using ADC 2 even though it's the 27th. So now what I'd like to do is go from here downwards. So we can set the altitude that we're planning, for example, 19,000. And uh, we can test these. There's a test button. Just will read zero and it will test. These are usually self-test, but we can test them as well. And at this point, I would usually set the next course and the runway headings uh, while I have the time. Then we can move downwards, check your flaps at zero, check your fuel at feather fuel shutoff, check this at ground idle, and parking brake is off. I will not discuss the GNSS, so we uh, have made a separate video about how to prepare for this. So what I would normally do is come here and continue downwards, but uh, I'll leave the link in the description for the video about this and I'll leave a link if I can on this video then we can continue downward here and this is our radio stack and uh, these are ADFs the comms transponder another com and the ADF so same same way we can do this there's a test a test 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 it says flag 10 but it will soon turn to zero. Yeah, this act radio actually has a problem. So when you have a flag ten, I guess you should report it to your technician or engineer and have them take a look at it, which I will do soon. This is your transponder. Off standby on Alta and FID so we can set our flight number on the FID and put it back to standby below here we have our switchings these are our trims this is our aileron trim so we need to test this during the first start of the day the way to do it it's controlled by two rocker switches as you can see both of them have to be simultaneously actuated for the trim wheel to move. So the way to do this is um, we would check here for our trims. This is the aileron trim, this is the rudder trim and this is the elevator trim. So for the first start of the day we need to see full deflection of all three of these items. So let's start with the ailerons. So keep a watch there and you can keep a watch here as well. So the first test of course is full movement. So both rocker switches to the right and you can see that the needle is moving on the right. Full deflection, same way on the left.
can see that. And now let's go back to neutral. And now there's a further test that uh, when you press them individually, there should be no movement of the trim when uh, you're using just one of the rockers. So you need to test both sides that if we press either of the rockers, that the trim does not indeed move. We do the same with the rudders. So we have this dual switch kind of a thing. So left and right, as you can see that moves. And we can go all the way to the right. And back to center. So also we need to check that it does not move the trim when you use uh, one of the switches. And also moving these in separate direction also centers the rudder cam. And this is our standby pitch. So we can nose up, nose down. <coughs> So that's the sound of the wooler. It actuates when you use the elevator trim for more than one second. So that was our test, close that, it's a guarded switch. We can also test it on, uh, we have to test our, the electric trim, which is also the elevator trim. So the same way, pull down, and uh, this should be moving. Oh, sorry, should be moving with this. And then we can move further to the lights, make sure they're off for the day or minimized. So next we go to our TCAS. Now there's two ways of testing the TCAS. If we test the transponder or this, it's going to do the same thing. So these both have a test function. There's a test on the transponder and there's a test on the TCAS. However, both of them test the TCAS because the TCAS operates with the transponder. So now to test the TCAS, let's choose this one today. And I would press test. And uh, it's supposed to be testing on the TCAS. Oh, there we go. I wasn't pressing hard enough. So we have this. I'm pressing and holding the button. And uh, that's what it looks like. And if you continue pressing, it will go into this screen and it would say all okays. If it says everything is okay, the TCAS is okay. And then now we can release. TCAS system test okay. Get on oral. Next test is the ATPCS. So this is the, the way to test this is. There's four positions. There's arm on each side with engine one, and then there's arm with engine two. So we would first put it on arm. We would check that both torques have risen, and you have your HPCS arm light. We would next move it to engine one, and you would see that uh, engine one torque goes to zero, and the arm light off and up trim comes on the right hand side. Let's do that again. This is normal. Up trim goes off. A test on number one. This is the arm 
and then engine one. One drops, up trim on the right, and HPCS goes off. We do the same with the right hand side. HPCS arms, right goes to zero, up trim on the left, HPCS goes off. And we close it, it's guarded. And that is about it for the full long transit internal checks and the captain would come in and do the the stick shaker and pusher test after he's in and uh, after the walk around so this is usually all this test is usually done uh, during the first flight of the day or when you have a very long transit or if you've uh, traded planes with a crew but did not have time to talk to them you do this you do this checks all checks uh, we what is a good practice is that uh, we can check in the qrh the quick reference handbook the, the checklist the checklist for the cockpit preparation and it's good to go through it step by step to see if we have actually indeed covered everything so there's a cockpit preparation checklist you can go through ahead with the overhead panel the pedestrian checks so it has all the checks in here and we continue go through all of them and once we're satisfied we say complete stay tuned for the next video i hope you've enjoyed this very long video <laughs> Stay tuned for the next one where I'll be teaching you how to do the transit checks, the short transits, where we just check a few things and uh, we proceed with the other operations. Let me know in the comments if there is something specific you want to know about the ATR or anything aspect. And I'll try to make it happen. Thank you and see you in the next one.